Hello, everyone, and welcome to our today's uh, Quanser webinar. My name is Zuzana Fabushova, and together with my colleague Mitch Levy, um, R&D engineer for special projects in, at Quanser, we will be your hosts and webinar moderators today. Good morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, so um, this presentation, I'd like to introduce uh, some uh, for those that are new to Quanser, I realize that some people are both new and old uh, Quanser users. So I'm going to introduce some um, uh, the academic teaching platforms that we have, as well as a bit of research, and uh, talk about a, a lot of new solutions that uh, we're very excited about. For those of you who don't know, Quanser stands for Question and Answer. Uh, we've been in industry for a long time. We actually celebrated our 30th anniversary last year so we're very happy about that so given that we've been uh we've, we've collaborated you know we've had the opportunity to, to collaborate with a number of schools from around the world right so we have university of sheffield there on the top left um york university right here uh, close to toronto uh, american university of Sharjah. so as you can see we've we're very much an international company and it's been that way for many years now the mission and something I truly uh, can attest to uh, from Quanser being a student myself when uh, a long, long time ago uh, is bridging the gap between theory and application. So, you know, you're in the lecture hall that's shown on the right there and you want to apply all this theory and get more of um, a hands on and uh, to make these these uh, these topics more concrete inside the lab by using systems. So that has been basically our mission over the last three years. So 30 years in the academic market, uh, globally over 2,500 institutions. We also have, and we're very proud of this as well, um, over 1,750 uh, research papers uh, published that we know recorded it, and then we're sure there's more of those as well as 60, um, over 60 products and solutions. Now, I'm not too sure about uh, the Cube Server 2 uh, is, uh, has been with us for a while. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, first of all, what is it? And a little bit of the history of the Cube Servo and the recent updates we've made. Now I realize this video, this video is available on our website, but to give you a glimpse of what the Cube Servo is in a nutshell, this is the video on our product webpage. Again, my apologies if the video is lagging, but you can see this on the product page. So the Servo is a fully integrated system. You have uh, the amplifier and the acquisition built in. You have two different modules. You have the inertia disk and the inverted pendulum. You can change between these two modules to conduct different experiments very easily. So no tools needed, it's just magnetic. Uh, you have an LED light that tells you when it's active. You can also control the different colors of the LED. Different panels, right? So it's very, um, the QFlex 2 interface allows you to interface it via USB or for example, through a Raspberry Pi or Arduino, right? Through the embedded panel. And we also have a MyRio panel for LabVIEW users. And as we will discuss, it's also in line with a lot of the popular textbooks out there, the control textbooks. And we have a textbook mapping guide. And here is showing you a few of the topics. Now, we're going to be going through these uh, in a little bit more detail, so we won't, uh, we'll cut it short there. Um, so in case you didn't see the video, uh, here's a picture of what the hardware at a glance. So we have the inertial disk module on top. The amplifier and the acquisition are again are built in inside the, the system. Two modules, right? The inertial disk to do DC motor, more classic control experiments, as well as the inverted pendulum and the LED light. Um, it comes with a total of three sensors. Um, uh, two sensors officially with the encoder to measure the position, but you can derive the velocity from the encoder, and that's done actually on the board. So you can add, so you basically have a digital tachometer. So position, velocity, um, you have an encoder on the pendulum as well, and a current sensor. So you can measure the current inside the motor. The QFlex 2 interface. So this allows you to uh, interface with the system using different hardware. 
So the one on the left is called the QFlex 2 embedded panel that allows you to use stuff like uh, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, like shown in the video. The USB has its own uh, full DAC on there. So that's made to plug in your laptop or desktop PC. And on the right is a QFlex 2 MyRio panel for the LabVIEW users. Now here is uh, the textbook mapping guide. That's actually available on our website, so you can check that out. So it shows the the core topics. Now, as I'll discuss later, we've actually expanded this now, but uh, it maps all the core topics um, that with the Coursera that we supply with the Cube Servo. The labs are on the left, and on the top row, uh, it features all the uh, control system textbooks, right? So the eight most popular control textbooks uh, worldwide along with our experience controls app which is a mobile textbook that i'll also uh, talk about later on so i'm showing here the nice textbook the ogata uh, the book by franklin and powell so all these are probably very familiar to you and you can you can check that out uh, at your leisure so for those people that are new to the cube and new to quantzer like basically it like in a, in a few slides how do, how does this thing work well it's pretty easy you plug in either the you you add the disk or the inverted pendulum. Uh, if you're using the USB panel, you connect that to your laptop or PC. You power it up. Um, it comes fully with the labs. All comes supplied with you know pre-done Simlink models for you that you can modify. And as you can see, these three blocks. So it's all using native Simlink. Uh, there's no smokes and mirrors or anything like this. This is native Simlink code. And with our Quark software. This is what allows you to easily interface to the Cube Servo along with all Quantzer hardware, depending on your license. So the three core blocks, uh, the bread and butter of Quark are Hill Initialize, Hill Write, and Hill Read. So this is showing you with these three blocks, you can access all the IO. So the Hill Write analog here is applying a voltage to the ampl amplifier slash DC motor, and the Hill Read encoder is measuring the position of the motor. And this is implementing a simple PD control. So if I show the video of this, how it runs, so I, I took this just off my desktop really quickly, right? So you run the Simic model, you, you can see on the top right that the motor is indeed moving. So you're doing position control using PD. You can tune stuff on the fly. So right now I'm changing the derivative gain. So if I basically take off the derivative gain, I don't know if you can see this, uh, then you'll see a lot of oscillations and overshoot in the response. And you can see that on the actual servo as well. And as well, you, so you can change the proportional gain too. So if you want to increase your response time, uh, you can increase that. So all these parameter changes are done on the fly. Now, why the cube, right? So uh, for those of you that have been with us for a while, you're probably, you know, um, and people have asked us when we released this like seven years ago, like why, you know, you already had a servo and we still have the, the Rotary servo system. And it is it is and remains being one of our, our, our most popular uh, solutions. Um, and that's to the test of time and it's still very popular. So why introduce another servo when you already had one? Well, this is basically based on what people wanted. Certain regions want something a little bit more cost effective. Uh, the Rody Servo, as you know, was a very modular system that uh, you know delved in more advanced control topics and all that. But um, a lot of people um, in certain regions want something a bit more cost effective. They wanted something, other regions want something more modern. They want something, for example, more compact that took lab less lab space because lab space was at a premium in many places but the common trend was they all wanted the high quality of other um quantum solutions so we answered with the cube servo that's basically why so we had a fully integrated solution with the amplifier and dac embedded inside to be more uh, more cost effective it was more modern and more and more um and also it took less lab space so it was a lot more compact the modern interface, right? The USB MyRio and embedded interface uh, that is also expandable is that's the more modern approach. And then, um, of course, one of the most important things is the teaching requirements. This still, this still um, 
but we did something a little bit different in the courseware for the teaching requirements because we do supply courseware with all our Quantive systems. But for the cube, we did we we want to make short modular labs based on some feedback that we got from other systems, and so we we changed it to more short modular labs that were more easy to to integrate within your own lectures, and um, also, uh, they were you could edit them as well, so it was very easy and more manageable that way, and it still satisfied the main topics in control systems. And we hit the the ground running, so we were the, like just a few months after the release, we went to uh, we did a workshop. The, so one of the first workshops, one of the first workshops we did with the Cube server was at the at Hubli, uh, the the Hubli, um, uh, uh, sorry. Um, a conference on um, engineering education at Hubli in India. And this is uh, dating back January 16th, 2014. Uh, it was a packed house. So the Cube Server was one of our, our fastest selling systems. And and when we did this workshop, I mean, we, we had to close it. You know, people, more people than registered were trying to get in the door, but we just had no more room. So there was definitely a lot, a lot of excitement in the air. Uh, another workshop that we did, uh, very different, but this one was at Amity, also in India, was called Train the Trainer Course. So what we did there is we had 10 cubes. It was a five-day week-long training session featuring 30 professors. And we did a course on how to teach a more practical control systems uh, course. So that's basically what we did there. It was a very exciting project, and uh, it was really interesting to work with um, all these professors. Uh, the Cube Server 2 and Quantor, uh is, you know, we have a lot of um, very engaged clients already in the UK. Here's a few of them here. So as you can see, um, the Cube Servo has has definitely been around, and uh, this is maybe a bit more for people that have been with Quantor for a long time. But I think this is kind of interesting, right? The whole update progression, right? So in 2011 is when we start seriously. Uh, hearing a lot of, you know, identifying regions that want something more compact, more modern, more cost-effective. And then uh, in 2013, we started, you know, development of the, the Cube Servo. That's when basically when it was released. And we developed our courseware, our lab courseware that is shipped with the Cube based on syllabus from actual universities, such as uh, Anna University, uh, University of Kerala, many North American universities, uh, nice control systems textbook, and so on, and we all did these short module labs. Right after that, um, based on our work that we did with um, Ben Rad at the University of Toronto for his control systems course, we had developed a Quantor driving simulator. So we took that and developed these uh, these application labs and ported that over to the core curriculum. So that is still offered with the system. In 2014, we worked with LTI, Lawrence Technological University, and they, they loved the cube, but they wanted more topics. So they already had a bunch of cubes, and they wanted to get some ideas for some new topics uh, to add, for example, like fre frequency response modeling. So we did that. We added those. The year after that was, uh, so we partnered with Queen's University. So we did, we actually worked, we did, conducted part of the course for teaching digital controls, and we developed this digital discrete course where with Professor Kavon at Queen's University. And then we, all that stuff we did was developed for the rotary servo. So we took all the material and then, and uh, made these, all these add-on labs for the Q servo. So from until on, the stuff that we did with LTI and, Qu and Queens, uh, these were all add-on labs that we kind of ha had scattered all over the place. Uh, in 2016, we released the second version of the cube that featured the more innovative QFlex 2 interface. And on that, we added two core labs, state-based modeling for the pendulum, as well as lead compensator control for the DC motor. So in 2017, uh, now for those of you that have been with us for a long time, now I'm really dating myself, but the QET. The QET DC motor was a fantastic system, but um, like all technologies, you know, it stood the test of time for a while, but we it got discontinued, uh, I think the year before that. And many users at the QET, um, they love the cube, so they, they migrated to the cube. But the thing is, the QT had a couple of, they had, it had a, a great courseware that was developed with Carl Astrom, and it was a full textbook, basically. 
So there are some of those labs, some of the content of that material that people wanted, some of the more advanced labs actually. So we did that. So we answered, this was based again on client feedback. So we took a few of those labs and, and put them over to the Cube Servo. Last year, we did some work on another hardware platform for uh, the Chinese market. So we developed a number of labs for that and we had uh, some great feedback and review from Professor Zhao at um, Tsinghua University. And what we did there was we took all those labs and again, we, we made those like add-on labs for the Cube Servo. So finally, because I'm almost out of breath, um, this year in 2020, as I said, all these, all the content that we did with all these different uh, institutions and professors and based on feedback, they were all add-on labs. So we finally took all these, all these uh, labs and, and made them part of the core curriculum. So we've added, actually, we've doubled, we've essentially doubled the number of labs that we offer with the Cube Servo. So we show this slide a lot, but I mean, I, this is like uh, definitely a great example of that. You know, we definitely, uh, all the people that we've uh, worked in the past, we are, you know, we're colleagues with all you guys. So uh, we're very thankful for that. This is the uh, courseware for the DC motor at a glance. So the dark red is the courseware they had before and the pale red is the labs that we've added. So we've added a whole discrete control section, for example, in more modeling labs. For the pendulum, the pendulum we've added a pole placement lab and we still have um, a lot of the uh, traditional modeling labs as well as uh, different ways to do balance. Okay, so now we will, uh, so I'm gonna go through a little, uh, just a short overview of some of the labs uh, to show you basically, the purpose of this is, uh, is I wanna show you what the lab, the exi using the existing labs that can save you a lot of time, what can you teach with it from the get-go? That's very easy. And also to give you ideas of what else you can do with the Cube Servo because uh, um, all the stuff I'm showing you are labs that are already done for you, but you can of course create your own labs, create your own SIMIC models. And um, so it, it's very open architecture. These are the modeling labs that we supply with it. So we have step response, frequency response, a blog diagram, parameter estimation, state-based modeling, and friction identification. Let's go through the step response modeling because I think this is one of the most uh, common ways of modeling a DC motor in a lab, right? So modeling a DC motor using a first order transfer function. So you apply a voltage signal and you measure the corresponding output. Uh, this is a SIMIC model that is uh, that is supplied with the system. So as you can see, uh, very simple, using native SIMLink as well as a cor the cork blocks to interface to the system. So you're, in, you're applying a set voltage to the motor and you're measuring the motor speed using the uh, encoder sensor on the cube. And here is the video. So this is showing you kind of full length of when you, so with the SIMIC model, you connect to the targets. It's basically when you uh, you generate code because it's a real time, the quark is a real time control software. You build an executable from the SIMIC model. You connect to it, you run it, and then you can monitor the signals on your scopes. So right here, I'm applying a voltage of two volts and measuring the corresponding speed. Once you've done that, you can do analysis, right? So you can use all the tools that Simlink has. And for example, measure uh, right here, what I'm doing is measuring the time constant, right? So I'm measuring the time constant of the response using the measurements tool directly on the scope. Now you can also save that data for offline analysis. So if you wanna do all your analysis in MATLAB instead, sure, you can do that. There's a number of ways to save data, very easy. And then you can start using uh, native MATLAB to do all your analysis. System analysis. Uh, so these labs are the precursor to control design. So we have stability analysis using the Bible principles, second order systems. Uh, we've added Routh Hertz and Nyquist as well. Uh, so second order systems deals with this, right? So by using a unit feedback on the cube, you can learn more about uh, your peak time and overshoot and all these core concepts that lead into control design. So speaking of control design, we have a number of labs addressing many, many topics. So we have uh, you know, proportional control, PD control, 
steady state error, um, disturbance rejection, uh, even a robustness lab, right? So we've added that. That's something that was based actually on the QET curriculum, right? A little bit more of an advanced topic there, but dealing with parameter sensitivity, right? So for some people that want something a little bit more advanced, we feature that. Here is a variation of a PD control. So this is the block diagram, the theory of, uh, and this comes right, right from our courseware. So you have proportional control and derivative control. And then you have your PD control. This is how the implementation is done. So again, it's using native symlink. And note here that the symlink diagram looks a lot like the theory, right? There's not too much difference, except instead of having a simulation, you're talking to the plant directly using the quark blocks. And here it is running. So I'm uh, right now you can see that I showed this video already, but again, I want to show you this. You can tune the gains on the fly as it's running, right? So this is implementing PD control. But if you take off the derivative, you're left with just a simple proportional control and see these oscillations. And if we go to the next slide, this is basically the difference, right? So this I feel is very important because when you first introduce PD control to the student, it's um, through simulation and doing all this transfer function math. Uh, you can, sometimes you you don't get to see what the benefits are, right? What a why is PID used? Why is PID the most used controller worldwide? Well, you can kind of show this, right? Like PD, first of all, you can use PD to control an actual system, you know, controlling the position of a motor and then show what the different terms do, right? So if you don't have derivative control, you get tons of verbal shoot oscillation. By adding derivative, you can make that response, uh, you can decrease the elbow shoot and oscillations of the response. Discrete control. So this was, uh, again, when we worked with uh, Queen's University, we developed a number of labs for discrete control. And uh, it deals with stuff like sampling, uh, stability as well as discrete control design. So what we did here is, you know, we mimic the discrete controller by adding um, by adding some uh, a zero order hold to the SIMIC model in Quark and doing that and look at how sampling affects the uh, the response. It's a very interesting lab actually, and it's quite prevalent as well now because a lot of people are developing stuff on embedded platforms. Pendulum modeling, so we have moment of inertia, state-space modeling. Uh, here's basically an example. Uh, this is probably bringing nightmares to some people, but you know those are the uh, linear equations of motion that you derive, and then you convert that to state-space, and you validate it, right? So at the end of the day, again, you might be doing all this math, but you get to validate and see what, what a state-space model, what you can actually do with it, right? A di different way of modeling in a very uh, a different way uh, of modeling a system. And that's very well used for, for MIMO systems, right? Where transfer functions uh, uh, can be used, but is not optimal. Pendulum control. So we have a pendulum balance uh, that's using basically a PID type of balance controller. We have LQR, we have pole placement, and we have the swing up controller. So the last one I was gonna show you is the swing up. So the swing up, is an introduction to non-linear control. So this is the last lab of the full sequence. And uh, it's an energy-based controller that uses the inherent non-linear dynamics of the pendulum based on a research paper written by Professor Ferruta and Professor Colastrum, whom we've collaborated with a lot. Here is a SIMIC model. So the controller is all embedded inside there. You can modify it, like I said. It has two controllers, it has a swing up controller and once it goes to the invert position, it switches to the balance controller. Now, I hope you can see this, but again, I took a short video of it running. So I'm running the SIMIC model here, and it's swinging up the pendulum. Then when it's at the invert position, it switches to the linear controller, and it's quite stable, right? It can reject some disturbances there. You saw there, I was trying to nudge it over, so it's quite resilient. Now, 
I've, I've just previewed some of the labs that we had and some of the labs that we've added. Uh, I hope that was interesting. But it doesn't stop there, right? Because, I mean, we know uh, you can design and build your own labs. Uh, this is not a black box, folks. You have direct access to the sensors, to the actuators. You can create your own SIMIC models. You can take our existing SIMIC models and modify them. And if you want more information about the whole philosophy of um, our whole open, open architecture philosophy, if you will, please visit our blog, and I showed you the link there. And I'll give you a, a, a bit more explanation of what that means. Now, I'm really excited to, to talk about this, the Quantum Interactive Labs. So this is... Um, so this has been released on April 6th, I believe, the first uh, revision. And these are virtual labs, uh, which uh, are great for when you don't have access to the lab to conduct your, your labs using a virtual environment. So this is showing the desktop version that we have of QLabs. Uh, this is the arrow system there that's showing you on the top, on the bottom left. So the arrow is a twin rotor system. So it looks identical to the actual hardware that we have. It comes full with courseware. You get to interact with it. So it's basically it's the next best thing to having the actual hardware. Here is a cube servo. So you are, you saw the cube servo running. Here is a virtual environment. So again, it looks uh, very similar to the actual system. So you interface to it. Uh, we have a very high fidelity model. You get to conduct your labs through that. And then finally, the Q-Arm, which is a Ford off robotic manipulator you can conduct ex exercises using that. So we have both a desktop version, but we also have a mobile version that's shown on the left there, where you, uh, and again, this comes fully packaged with the courseware and uh, an immersive simulation that's very interactive. So it's interactive, right? So it allows you to do lab, lab activities off campus. It's extremely easy to integrate within your online lectures. And uh, it adds interaction, right? Especially given these times when you may not have live access. This is definitely something I feel is very important. And uh, it's very, you know, so, and it's easy to get started, right? So it's cross-platform. You know, Windows 10, Google Play, Mac OS, um, Apple. So, uh, and you don't need any IT. So it's very infrastructure friendly, if you will. You can adopt this very, very quickly. And it's scalable. These are all standalone apps, standalone applications, and it's more scalable than than any uh, traditional hardware approach. Now, the combination between the virtual system and the actual hardware is is a winning combination because you can conduct all your lab work off campus or pre lab using the virtual system. This will make your time a lot more optimal when you do get. Um, lab time with the actual hardware or if you don't at all uh, for the next couple of months then you have the virtual system at least right so having those two together is um, is just like I said it's a winning combination here because uh, it makes you a better engineer at the end because you get to work with uh, you get more time to work with the actual system uh, virtually and then doing it on the actual hardware where you get the full dynamics and the more tangible experience so that was Quantor Labs, uh, Q Labs. Uh, we have some more development, which I'll tell you a little bit um, about that. Experience Controls app. So the Experience Controls app uh, has been was released last year, and we've had some great feedback of that. So Experience Controls app is a little bit different. So this uh, is not like Q Labs that has uh, virtual models of the Quantor systems, but this features uh, virtual models of various systems found around the world. And it's, a, it's an online, uh, fully immersive controls textbook. Uh, so we've, we had a whole team working on this, and you can download it. You can download the Experience Controls app on iOS and Android. This is a perfect partner to QLabs, to your lectures. And you can download it again today. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, it's 
and when I say complete, it has a number of topics. I mean, we've, you know, uh, we went through all the different control systems textbook, textbooks and featured topics from, from all, you know, the whole spectrum. It also comes with many resources like um, for the instructor. So it comes with uh, lecture slides. It comes with problem bank solutions, um, solutions for the students, solutions for the, the professors. So please check that out. This is a very good accompaniment to your um, your current uh, your current lectures and um, to Q Labs and to our and to Quanta Hardware. So we have experience controls on April six. We released the uh, the first version of Q Labs, uh, which is free until July first, which is coming up pretty quick. On July 1st, we're going to be releasing QLabs controls and QLabs robotics on a which will be subscription based. Uh, so QLabs controls will feature the Q arm and the cube servo, as well as a pendulum system. And the QLabs robotics will feature the Fordoff robot manipulator that I showed you in the video earlier. Then later on, uh, probably in the fall or so, we're targeting is uh, a full virtual. Exp um, immersive experience with the Quantum Virtual Labs, which will feature full courseware and full interface systemic models. So I guess three things I want to end uh, is um, please go on our website and find out more details on QLabs or Interactive Labs. It's free until July 1st. Uh, so I encourage you to download that and check it out. You can make it part of your course right away. Uh, also, have a look at experience controls. Please contact Anant if you want any more information, or myself. And stay tuned for more for more webinars on on our on our digital offering. So we've talked about the Cube Servo hardware, we've talked about experience controls, and we've talked about Q Labs. Now, like I showed you on one of the first few slides, we have over 60 teaching solutions. So, I mean, unless you want to stay on the call for another day, uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, but uh, we have, you know, after that, it's basically these these three um, core solutions is a springboard to launching, um, to going into different areas, right? So if you want to go into advanced controls, aerospace, mobile robotics, robot, robotic manipulators, structural dynamics with their shake tables, unmanned vehicles, drones, and our newest, one of our newest solutions, a self-driving car. So you have a number of different uh, solutions that you can, uh, so please look at our website if there's anything there that interests you and feel free to ask us questions. This is, I'm giving you a preview here of the Ford Off robot manipulator arm called the Q-Arm. So we're very happy about this because we have our own robot right now. So it's all direct access and it's basically, as you can see, it looks a lot um, like the Cube Servo, right? It's gonna be part of that whole line, that whole uh, compact modern uh, solution. And uh, check out our website where, you know, it's already, we've re you know, we've already received tons of orders for these. Uh, so it's, it's um, so please have a look at our website for more information. Okay, uh, I'd like to f finish my presentation with um, two examples on research. So the Cube Servo is very much a teaching system, but at the end of the day, um, it does have, it is gaining quite a reputation as being a research platform, uh, similarly to our other systems. We have a website called Research Papers. So Quanta.com Research Papers is where we uh, record um, all the different publications that use Quantz equipment. So we're at, um, oh, sorry, I lied actually, we're at 1749, not 1750, but next month we'll be at 1750. So this lists a bunch of different, uh, all the different papers. You can list by product or you can search the title. So for example, if you're interested in something like adaptive control or H infinity control, you can look that up and look at what other people have done with systems. So we did a little research profile on the Cube Servo. 
And it was actually very interesting because this is actually unlike most of our systems where usually it's uh, more traditional control and modeling topics. It did have that. The majority of topics are still there, but 36% pre 36 of the papers published were on modern techniques such as IoT and AI. So 13 of the 36 papers were, were based on these modern approaches. So here's an example um, done at Electronics and Telecommunications Research Institute in Korea. So this is a fabulous paper where they actually employed uh, techniques from both IoT and from AI. So they used the embedded panel on the cube to connect it to a Pi. So basically the cube servo is, it's an unstable non-learning system. And when you couple that with the Raspberry Pi embedded platform, you have a, a smart system or a cyber physical system. So that is connected through the network. And it's basically, uh, they have a controller on the Pi that just sends the sensor information from the motor and the pendulum and receives the motor voltage. So it has no, uh, the controller is not running on there. It's waiting for, for the commands from, from uh, remotely. Uh, that's done through network-based control. But they use a very popular, uh, well, actually, uh, MQTT, which is uh, one of the standards in IoT uh, for it's a messaging protocol that's used, uh, that's widely used for IoT. So they use the MQ, MQTT protocol on the network uh, to handle the data management. And they did the algorithm using a deep reinforcement learning. So uh, here's a picture that I took on the YouTube, because again, the video might be lagging, but the deep learning algorithm uh, trains a neural network to perform the swing up. So the swing up is traditionally done by uh, using the model, right? So you derive the full dynamics of the model, you derive it from, from there, and you do the swing up. But in this case, uh, you're trained in a neural network to do that, and it's doing it through the network. So I'm going to try to play this. Um, if it's lagging too much, then you can uh, please see the link there. Yeah, I think it's... I'll just show part of it because uh, it's actually four minutes long, but it's the very comprehensive that you showing um, showing glimpse of the whole algorithm they're doing because there's a, there's a lot to it and uh, yeah so here's a, this is a good variation I just want to show you the first video where the you show the reinfor reinforcement learning so here's a when it starts to learn, right? So you can see it's failing at first, but after a few episodes, it starts to learn how to do it. And the more episodes it has, the more efficient the swing up, the less swings it takes. The second example I wanna do is at the Max Planck Institute uh, for Intelligent Systems. So what they did there is um, they're using the LQR balance controller, but it's an event triggered uh, system. So it's it's a smart type controller. So I like this because it's combining the traditional LQR control with a more modern uh, intelligent technique of updating the model. So the LQR control is based on the model, but your controller is only as good as how accurate your model is. Now, if there's changes to your actual system or some parameters are not known, then the model should be updated accordingly. And this is what this does, right? So if the the hardware changes or there's something uh, uncertain, then the model will be, uh, after after there's a trigger, the model will be updated and then that will update the LQR controller. So what they did there is, uh, here's the cube servo and they add a sliding mass. So the sliding mass changes the dynamics of the pendulum. So when they add the sliding mass to change the dynamics of the paper of the pendulum, it triggers um, the model to be updated. So once the model, uh, the learning begins and it starts doing the uh, dynamics learning as they, as they call it, and then uh, once the model is updated to reflect the actual hardware changes, the controller, the LQR controller gets updated, and then you get better control performance. 
So those are two examples, and uh, that is my presentation, guys. So um, I'd like to thank everyone for joining, and um, I'll stop here and see if there's any questions. Thanks for the presentation, Mitch. Uh, we have a few questions that have come in. Um, uh, one of the questions is, uh, what are the different ways of connecting to the queue? Um, uh, with some reference to microcontrollers. So uh, I want to uh, definitely take this opportunity to mention that uh, the Cube Servo 2, um, uh, the inverted uh, pendulum and rotary servo platform, um, is very flexible. Uh, it uh, already comes with a um, USB connectivity to PC for PC-based control, but uh, we also have uh, swappable back panels that are specifically available for NIMI Rio uh, to use with uh, LabVIEW. Um, yes, uh, as you can see, which is free. And we also have the embedded IO panel, uh, which can be used for SPI control. Um, in addition to this, uh, in our latest uh, offering um, of the Quark software for Simulink, uh, one of the targets, uh, um, um, uh, Raspberry Pi, and uh, we have uh, uh, Hill API, uh, for users that would like to explore connecting via microcontrollers, uh, uh, such as Raspberry Pi and Arduino. Um, as uh, Mitch also referred uh, in his presentation, um, the connectivity goes uh, beyond uh, just uh, MATLAB Simulink and uh, LabVIEW. Uh, many of our research customers, as well as teaching customers, are using uh, the Cube Servo with. Um, with some IoT platforms, some networking platforms, and they found it to be um, useful for this. Uh, the second question that we've received is uh, around uh, the Cube Servo 2 um, courseware and which are labs, which are type of topics it uh, helps address. So as uh, Mitch showed, it has been used for fundamental, intermediate, as well as advanced controls courses. And because it's an open architecture system, um, academics can use this to build their own control algorithms. Uh, another question uh, is there regarding the interactive labs, uh, which is understandable because uh, right now uh, the need for digital tools and being uh, prepared for uh, distance learning and uh, e-learning platforms uh, is pretty high due to COVID. And uh, the interactive labs solutions uh, yes, uh, uh, the question asked, uh, will there be a package for Aero, uh, which is the two, of, um, two degrees of freedom uh, plant along with the Quantum Cube Servo? And the Interactive Labs uh, solution, the QLabs controls package, uh, will contain both the Cube as well as the Aero uh, virtual plants. And there will be courseware for uh, both of them. Exactly. And uh, uh, yes, uh, this is available as a subscription model. Um, subscription model is for 12 months at a time. Uh, we will definitely um, uh, reach out to the person who's asked this question uh, with a quotation. And yes, we are available uh, to discuss the specific use case for interactive labs in your departments. Uh, one thing I definitely want to underscore uh, from Mitch's presentation is that the interactive lab solution uh, is the easiest to deploy and scale uh, for students because it does not require any specialized software stack. Um, uh, students uh, can, uh, do not have to worry about uh, uh, any IT considerations IT, or yeah, IT departments. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. So IT departments need not uh, provide additional support or need to get additional budgets to be able to support moving a fundamental controls lab course. Uh, online, and this is a uh, big value add uh, to most of the universities that we have spoken with. Um, next question that we have uh, uh, is around uh, uh, is around research. So, as Mitch mentioned, you can go to ponza.com um, forward slash research papers, and you can filter in to see the research papers that have been published. Uh, yes, you will find the abstracts. Uh, as well as links to some papers uh, that have been published, especially I think on the lines of uh, Internet of Things, uh, machine learning uh, uh, algorithms. And uh, uh, because we have collaborated in supporting some of those applications, 
um, you can discuss your research application with us directly. Uh, and in the UK, uh, we are used to working with EPSRC funded projects, and we also help our uh, customers um, uh, prepare proposals to be submitted to EPSRC and other organizations uh, for grant applications. Yes, I think there, there are several other questions about the virtual labs and the interactive labs. Uh, uh, here, I also want to make a point that, uh, uh, as Mitch mentioned, we, after the Q Labs uh, uh, software, which has been already released, we are also working on uh, providing the virtual models of the Q and the Aero and some of our other solutions, uh, also in subscription format, uh, which can be connected uh, with simulating controllers. So you can get a virtual setup where the controllers can be designed in MATLAB Simulink and can be connected to the virtual plant uh, that you can see over here. And that is something that we will be uh, announcing very soon. And you, know, you can expect that we will be doing a webinar to demonstrate that solution as well. In terms of the digital offering, um you can download like experience controls and q labs you you can download today um and like anon said in july 1st we're releasing q labs controls and right after uh q labs robotics so q labs controls will feature three systems the cube servo dc motor the cube servo 2 inverted pendulum and the q arm the ford off robot manipulator so that will be the controls and then robotics will Oh, sorry, it'll feature the arrow, the arrow, the arrow, cube servo two DC motor, and cube servo two pendulum, and then we'll feature the robotics. So that will be a desktop format and a mobile format. So you have two ways: the more portable one or uh, the desktop version. And then we'll have a fully immersive experience where you can, with more plants. Uh, again, we'll be giving you more information about that. Please contact Anand for more information about what exact systems we'll have, but the full QLabs virtual um, controls will be, will allow you to use SIMIC models with uh, very high-end models and the virtual uh, systems themselves. So um, we're looking forward to that, but that will probably be targeted for around fall. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. The date is to be uh, determined. Yes, uh, and uh, I think we have last question uh, about local sales and support in the UK. Uh, so uh, as Mitch introduced me, I look after uh, working with our uh, academic customers in the UK. And we also have local representation uh, in the UK based out of uh, South London. Um, uh, Dr. Ramsey Arthur, uh, who is also a PhD in controls uh, through his company, Cosentech, uh, are available for consulting and sales and support uh, at local UK time, and uh, uh, I will include that information uh, to all the attendees uh, uh, in an email after this webinar. Um, thank you, uh, Anand, for moderating the Q&A and answering the questions. Thank you, Mitch, uh, for a great presentation. Thanks all attendees for joining us today. I hope you uh, enjoy the webinar and have a great rest of the day.